Uh, good evening, everyone, and wel I welcome you to this, my first State of the City address. This address is presented to you pursuant to a mandate of the Peekskill City Charter, which requires the mayor at a regular meeting of the Common Council at such times as the mayor deems proper to give a statement of finances and the general condition of the affairs of the city together with such recommendations as he deems proper. It is customary that the State of the City Address be given after the financial books and records of the previous year are finalized and audited by the city's independent auditors, O'Connor Davies. That audit was delivered to the city on June 30th, 2014, and we just received our briefing on that audit about a half hour ago. Upon taking office, I had called for an independent audit of the city's finances, which would have cost the city approximately $75,000. In the alternative, I met with O'Connor Davies. I examined their qualifications and backgrounds and their professional responsibilities, and I am convinced that upon review of their work product, that nothing has been held back. To further calm my initial call for an outside audit, I was informed that the office of the New York State Controller, Thomas DiNapoli, was conducting a detailed examination of the city's finances covering calendar years 2011, 12, and 13. That report was also delivered to the city on June 30, 2014. Thus, armed with those two independent reports, as well as having had the benefit of serving for the past seven months, I deem it appropriate to deliver the State of the City Address at this time. First, I will say that the State of the City's financial condition is strong in the sense that we have a tax base that can support the ongoing operations of the city without interruption. However, like any doctor would report on a patient with a chronic condition, the City of Peekskill is in stable but serious condition. Six years of poor management has left our city in dire straits. The assertion by some that the city is financially sound is simply false. In order to explain where we are, it is necessary to retrace where we have come from by taking a look at how we arrived at this point, what collateral damage has been done to the city, and what challenges we face from our past, that, and what we will do to ensure that we never repeat those catastrophic mistakes again. How we arrived here. At the close of the city's books in 2007, the last year the city closed with a balanced budget, the city surplus was $11.8 million. The mentality of not making tough decisions beginning in 2008 to cut expenses or raise taxes was artificially softened by what became a regular practice of using that $11.8 million unallocated fund balance to wipe out deficit. By not making hard decisions in 2008, the city closed the books with an operating deficit of $1.2 million. By not making hard decisions in 2009, the city closed the books with a $2.3 million operating deficit. By not making hard decisions in 2010, the city closed the books with a $2.5 million operating deficit. By not making the hard decisions in 2011, the city closed the books with a $4.7 million operating deficit. By not making hard decisions in 2012, the city closed the books with a $3.9 million operating deficit. Then, despite the draconian measures taken in the 2013 budget, we have just closed our books with a $3.8 million operating deficit, bringing the total deficit over those past six years, I'm sorry, the total operating deficit over those past six years to $18.5 million. These statistics are beyond dispute as they come from the city's independent auditors, O'Connor Davies. Those audits are available online and they are available for all of you to see. We have copies of the audit and uh, the controller's report from New York State available for you to take on your way out if you want to read it. The controller's audit was hardly a ringing endorsement of the fiscal management of the city's finances by the prior administration as portrayed by some on this council in a press release. I urge you to take a copy of it right outside this door and read it for yourself, especially the highlighted negative comments on the practice of balancing a budget by using fund balance. And this audit only covered 2011, 12, and 13. 
where the former administration drew down on a $5.2 million fund balance to a mere $7,500. Had that report looked back to 2008, the controller would have found that an $11.8 million fund balance had been squandered in the same manner. In 2013, the prior administration was forced to make hard decisions. I believe simply because there were no funds left in fund balance to continue fiscal mismanagement of the previous five years. Those cuts included the elimination of 33 positions. They also led to cutbacks in city hall hours, garbage pickups, restriction on opening the city garage for drop-offs, fees to drop off your own garbage, even the loss of the picnic for our senior citizens. These were cutbacks and there were cutbacks in parks and recreation activities especially at the Kylie Center where our most at-risk children are, charging those children an administrative fee for the first time in our city's history. The problem with enacting those fees is that long-standing events which make up the fabric of our community were not brought into the discussion. These fees led to the outright termination of some events without consideration to the negative economic impact their loss would have upon our city and our quality of life. Most significantly, the Peekskill Celebration was an ongoing annual event for 17 straight years. Well over 25,000 people per year came into Peekskill to attend the multi-day event. They stayed and patronized local art galleries, shops, restaurants, gas stations, convenience stores. And when the final fireworks display were over, people left Peekskill having had a memorable experience and very positive outlook on Peekskill. That event was a staple of our community, and it was snuffed out with the demand for a payment of $55,000 some eight months before the scheduled event. There was no discussion. There was no consideration. There was no realization of what impact that loss would have and continues to have on this city. The oppressive measures taken in the 2013 budget have left the city not only in a very serious financial condition, but unattractive to potential residents and investors. The final audit of the 2013 budget, despite reflecting a, the $3.8 million operating deficit, showed the city had a fund balance of $808,000, up from $7,500 at the end of 2012. This fact was quickly seized upon by some members of this council as not only great news, but actual evidence that their past fiscal management of the city's finances were appropriate and successful. Indeed, thirsting for good news after five years I've described, they ignored the $3.8 million operating deficit and issued a dramatic yet misleading press release. How could the city have both a $3.8 million operating deficit and end up with an $808,000 fund balance? That question remains unanswered, clouded in the audit. However, it is clear that these funds were not obtained from operating revenues nor used to offset the structural deficit of $3.8 million. Also coming to light in the independent audit was the deferred expense trick. Let me explain that one. Every year in the city's 74-year history, we have paid and met our financial obligations for any given year in that year's fiscal budget until last year. Last year, the city entered into something called the Pension Stabilization Program where a municipality does not pay the full pension costs for, to the state and defers a portion of that payment to some other point in the future. In 2013, the city's total pension costs were approximately $4 million. We paid approximately $3 million. We deferred $1 million to a future date. It is worth mentioning that this decision to defer that $1 million payment was not made until after the November 2013 election. So that hidden expense was deferred by a lame duck administration and dropped into the lap of an incoming administration, the first time that has ever been done in the city's history. Now, I do not seek to lay blame on anyone for our fiscal condition. <clears throat> I seek to explain it. The city will pay its debts regardless of where they come from, and I was elected to clean this mess up and move the city forward. But it is difficult to sit idly by 
after a million dollar debt has been dropped into my lap from the former mayor and council while they point to an artificial surplus as some sort of validation of the failed and disastrous fiscal policies of the past six years. The bottom line is, had the city paid its full pension costs and not deferred ex that expense onto this administration, that $808,000 fund balance would have actually been zero and an additional, additional $200,000 would have been added to the $3.8 million operating deficit. Okay, how we will address this damage. Upon taking office, like an emergency room doctor, our first priority was to stop the bleeding. We did that in a number of ways. First, by discontinuing the endless and expensive string of study after study after study. Every proposal that comes before this city does not require a study. And if you need a study to tell you private economic investment is how we stabilize and, in, and expand our tax base, you should not be in office. We have discontinued the attitude that the mayor is always right. And if you don't like the heavy handedness, go ahead and sue us. Because our budget is bottomless when it comes to hiring boutique law firms to defend us. Within two weeks of taking office, I bypassed the boutique lawyers, reached out directly and reached a settlement with the key bank in their lawsuit against the city of Peekskill, which threatened the removal of the entire audio and sound system at the Paramount Theater. I am thankful that the council approved that settlement. In my first month, I met with Martin Ginsburg of the D Ginsburg Development Corporation and outlined the settlement of a six-year tax lawsuit that had cost the city tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees, almost, in fact, almost as much as the settlement itself. I am thankful that the council and the city school district have approved that settlement that was outlined months ago. We have abolished the Kiley Center administration fees that had been levied on our children. We have, on a case-by-case -case basis, abolished the fees being charged to groups like the St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee and the Road Knights annual auto show, preserving what's left of our city traditions and quality of life. We've opened the city garage up to every citizen every weekend for drop-offs. Unfortunately, the remnants of the prior administration have voted to keep the unfair charges to our citizen at that drop-off, but I am hopeful that those fees will eventually be rescinded. On my second day in office, I met with the city planners and directed the Route 6 project from High Street to Hamilton Avenue be redrawn so that it does not interfere with business or make it harder for residents to find scarce parking on Main Street. Under the revised plan, both goals were achieved and we have not lost one single parking space. We have resolved the six-year dispute with the Lincoln Depot Foundation. In fact, we did that about 15 minutes ago. By engaging in dialogue rather than dictating so that that project will now be completed and that location will be a destination attraction for the city of Peekskill. We have resolved a 20-year need for the construction of a new central firehouse that has been bogged down for six straight years with $1 million worth of studies and drafts and redrafts of a simple floor plan. When I took office, I laid out two simple criteria for my approval of a firehouse. First, the size of the firehouse had to be reduced, and I'm pleased to report that the final building has been reduced from 36,500 square feet to 30,500 square feet, a 20% reduction in size. The second was the cost. At $18.5 million, the cost was simply a burden our taxpayers cannot afford. The size reduction reduced the construction cost from $18.5 million to $10.3 million, a 40% reduction. I want to thank all involved for approving this plan and bringing this issue to conclusion in six short months. I look forward to the groundbreaking ceremony this fall. We have restored morale with our employees by simply getting out of their way and stop micromanaging every aspect of city operations. We have restored civility, dignity, and honor in the conduct of our city business. We have done this by removing uniformed police officers from the council chamber, permitting more free speech, not restricting free speech, and observing decorum in ourselves, in our manner, in our tone, and yes, even in our dress. Our council meetings are now not only more civil, but they get much more accomplished in much less time. How we will move Peekskill forward. 
We often hear about things to come, but often things never seem to change. I am pleased to tell you of some concrete developments that could, with council support, change Peekskill forever. And the building that formerly housed the Crystal Bay Seafood and the Cove restaurants has been sold to a developer who will invest approximately $10 million to restore that building and redevelop the marina. I believe the closing has either taken place or will take place shortly. Next, Herman Peritsky, a well-known developer in the city who left the city after years of being thwarted by what he called an anti-development atmosphere at City Hall, is now back with a project on Central Avenue that will represent a 20 to $25 million investment in Peekskill. That's right across the street from Zepp's restaurant. Alma Realty, who incidentally had no plan pending in this city when I took office, is back with a hard plan for a $35 million luxury rental and commercial development along Park Street. This plan will bring 192 families and significant commercial investment to an area that desperately needs revitalization. And it will revitalize the Crossroad Shopping Plaza that will still be standing because it's not going to be taken for a firehouse. A major residential plan on Water Street, originally proposed over 10 years ago, is back knocking on the doors of City Hall with a $35 million plan for light commercial and significant residential development. And the city has been meeting privately with several developers who have shown an interest to develop Lower South Street, the Lower South Street corridor. These projects have ranged from 180 to $200 million and, if approved by the Common Council, would bring 1,000 to 1,250 new jobs to Peekskill. My friends, these combined projects represent almost a half a billion dollars of private development money and exciting new projects that are here now. And this is just the interest that's been generated in only the first six months of an administration with an aggressive pro-growth attitude. These projects will expand our tax base and cost very little to service. There is not one bad project among them. And while there may be a suggestion or two that can be made that will make those projects even better, I urge you all and I, and I urge the council to enthusiastically support these projects. In the past six years, where only one commercial building was built, the Walgreens drugstore, this city would be, should not be turning down any development project for any reason whatsoever. Lastly, I believe measures can be taken by this council to open the city up to continued economic development. They include the zoning change to the downtown business district that would allow expanded residential use of buildings, the abolishment of the regressive and ill-conceived transfer tax, the abolishment of the regressive and ill-conceived hotel occupancy tax, the abolishment of all dumping fees charged to our citizens for dropping off their own garbage at their own dump, the abolishment of the unfair garbage fees on multi-unit housing and condominium complexes. And of course, opening City Hall during normal business hours, and that means till 5 p.m. And we should take a second look at the Paramount lease that apparently has been very successful for the tenant, but has left the Peekskill taxpayer out in the cold with no return whatsoever on millions that they have invested there since 1972. In conclusion, the state of our city financially looks like a boxer after a 15-round prize fight. We have taken a beating, much of it self-inflicted, but we are still standing. We have shifted our focus to stopping the wasteful spending. We will welcome commercial and residential development that expands our tax base, creates jobs, and makes Peekskill a destination city. We have a difficult road, but by working together, our future has never looked brighter. My friends, it's dawn in Peekskill after a long, long cold night. We will persevere. May God bless you all, and may God bless the city of Peekskill. Thank you all very much.